Hi friends, it's James and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this is part three to creating a Discord bot in Python. In part one, I showed you how to set up your bot. In part two, we went over commands, events and detecting when a user leaves and joins a server. One of the things we got it to do when a user joins the server is that it will greet them and then also give them a random joke. It gets this joke from a random API that we called. So I'll be leaving a link in the description to those two videos. So go watch those if you haven't already. But let's get into part three. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be looking at enabling our bot to join voice channels and for it to leave voice channels. And then in the next episode, we're going to get it so it can play songs like files that you have on your computer or videos from YouTube. So stay tuned for that. So let's just jump straight into it. So let's start coding it so we can allow our bot to join a voice channel. So before we can start writing the code, we need to install an extra Python package. This Python package that we're going to be installing works with Discord PY. It's made by the people who make Discord PY. And it's essentially the package enables your bot to join a voice channel. You have to have this package installed for your bot to use a voice channel. So yeah, let's, let's go ahead and install that. So in your terminal, you want to run the following command. I'm going to leave this command in the description. Um, so you can just go ahead and copy and paste it from there. And then you want to go ahead and run it. I've already installed this, so I don't need to run it again. But once you've installed it, that's it. You've now installed all the packages we need to enable our bot to connect to a voice channel. So let's scroll down and let's create a new command. So we're going to do it like I showed you in the last episode. So we're going to do at client.command, open and close brackets, pass underscore context is equal to true. I didn't speak about what pass underscore context does in the last video. I'm not going to go into it now because I'm going to save that for a later video as it gets really interesting then. But just understand that we're going to need it for when we're communicating with the voice part of our bot. And then below here, we're going to define the function. We're going to say async def. And now we need to give our function the name. So in my case, in our case, we're going to call it join and then open and close brackets again and then ctx and then a colon ctx if you don't remember from the past episodes it essentially just allows you to communicate with your discord server in a sense so it allows you to send messages and receive messages as well as other properties like about users and channels etc so then we want to create an if statement and you'll see why in a second why we're going to be creating this so we're going to say if and open and close brackets ctx .author voice and then close brackets and then and colon and i'll explain in a second why we're creating this if statement and what it does and then inside of this if statement we want to type channel is equal to ctx.message.author.voice.channel and then we want to do a new line and then type await and then channel.connect open and close brackets and then we can go back here and we need to write the other part of our if statement. So we need to write else colon and then we need to type await and then ctx dot send open and close brackets speech marks. But just before we write a message in here, I first need to actually explain to you what this is doing. So we've created an if statement. I'm going to assume you know what an if statement does. If you don't just Google it, it will give you a very basic response. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying if the user who is running this command is in a voice channel, then it will run the following commands, else it will run this command. And so if a user is in a voice channel, it will get the channel ID or name and then it will join it. So when we run this and we're in a voice channel and then in a message we type our prefix, which in our case was an exclamation mark, then join. And because we're in a voice channel, um, our code will detect that. And then our bot will join the voice channel along with us. I hope that makes sense in what I'm explaining. And in this else section, so if we're not in a voice channel, we want our bot to send a message saying that 
you're not in a voice channel, so I've got nothing to join, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to write is, um, you are not in a voice channel. Um, you must be in a voice channel to run this command. There we go. So there we go. That's all we need to do to get our bot to be able to join a voice channel with us. So... We could go ahead and now run it on Discord and the bot would join our voice channel. However, there would be no way for us to make our bot leave the voice channel uh, once it's joined. And we don't want that. So we're going to create the leave command now as well. So we're going to come down here and we're going to do another command. So at client, just like we did before, dot command, open and close brackets. And then we need to pass in the past context like we just did up here. So we need to type that again, pass underscore context is equal to true. And now we need to do the same thing again, async and then def. And now we need to give our function a name service. And then again, from remember from last episodes, the name is what you type into the chat. So our prefix, which is an exclamation mark and then leave. This name is what our function name is here, just in case you didn't remember. So we're going to give it the name leave and then open and close brackets ctx and then a colon. And then we're going to do something very similar to this. We're going to create another if else statement. So we want to type if open and close brackets ctx dot voice underscore client. And this is slightly different to up here like we did because up here we did ctx dot author dot voice. This time we're doing ctx voice underscore client. And I'll get into that in a second about what it actually means. And then we're going to type await ctx dot guild dot voice underscore client dot disconnect. And then open and close brackets. And then we're going to type an await ctx dot send. And then we're going to type a message saying I left the voice channel voice channel. I'll explain in a quick second what this does, but we just need what this bit here does. But we just need to finish our if statement. So we need to write else um, colon. Oops, that's not a colon. There we go. Else await ctx dot send and then a speech marks. And then here we're going to put I am not in a voice channel. So now let me actually explain what this is, what this is doing. So we're saying if the bot is in a voice channel, then it will run the following commands. So it will disconnect and then it will send a message in the chat saying I left the voice channel. So you can notice here that this is actually different to this. This we're basically relying on the user input. So if the user's in a voice channel. However, here we're just going based on purely what the bot is doing. So if the bot is in a voice channel, then it will leave. I hope that makes sense in what I'm explaining there. And another thing I just wanted to point out is if you don't understand what guild here is, a guild is basically your server. So we're saying go to your server, go to the voice client. So the voice client is the voice chat that your bot is in and remove it. And then send a message like we have done in the past two episodes. Then we're going to just type a message saying I left the voice channel. And in this other part of the L statement, we have written it so that it will send a message saying I am not in a voice channel. So why why is it doing this else section? Well, it basically it's saying if your bot is not in a voice channel, it will run this command. And we'll get into that when I show you it when we run it. But actually no, let, let's run it now because we're done. This is everything we need for our bot to join and leave the server. So make sure you save it and then go ahead and run it in the terminal. So just like I showed you in the previous episodes and then we can run it. And remember, if we give it a few seconds, it should pop up saying, yep, our bot is now ready for use. So now let's head to Discord. So now look, we're now in our server. And as you can see here, I've already tested it out here just for before I filmed this episode, just to confirm that it all works. So yeah, and you can see up here, our bot is now online. So let's let's first join a voice channel. And I'm going to just quickly make sure I'm muted so that there's no any weird echo with the recording. 
And now we're going to, let's, let's run it. So exclamation mark, join, enter. And look at this, our YouTube bot has now joined. And let's now disconnect it. So exclamation mark, leave. And look at that, our bot has now left. It, and look, it also sent a message in the channel saying, I left the voice channel. So we've done it, we've able to connect our bot to a voice channel and then make it leave again. But let's say I was to disconnect from a voice channel. What would happen if we typed exclamation mark join? Well, let me show you. So this is where our if and else statement comes into play. Look, you can see here that our bot responds with, you're not in a voice channel. You must be in a voice channel to run this command. And that was what we wrote in our if else statement. So everything now works. However, the one other thing is, I didn't show you what we do if we say exclamation mark leave. And again, this is just like our if else statement. And you can see here that um, it's our bot has replied with, I am not in a voice channel. So there we go. It has now worked. We have successfully enabled our bot to connect to a voice channel. And then we can also make it leave a voice channel on command. So this is something really cool that you can now do. So this is now the end of this episode. In the next episode, we're going to be going over how we can get our bot to play files that are stored locally on our computer. But as well as that, we're going to go over how we can get our bot to play videos from YouTube. So make sure you stay tuned for that because that's going to be super cool. But yeah, if you've got any questions or if any of this didn't work, please drop a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to help you out and hopefully we can get it working. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this video at all, please do consider giving it a like as it really does help it out in the YouTube algorithm. And if you just want to be a part of this series, if you want to be notified for when I upload the next episode in this series, make sure you hit the subscribe and turn on the notification bell. But anyway, I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.